What's up, world? King James, and we are back at Gallery 530 as Kaleidoscope presents Heartbreakers 2. I am standing here with local upcoming artist, Julia. Julia, welcome to the show today. Hello, thank you. I'm standing in front of what looks like a bird, and I'm hoping this bird is he's sleeping right now. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> sleeping, sleeping. I um, Animals are a huge inspiration to me. The environment is a huge inspiration to me, and I worked with Birds of Prey for many years and did field rescue with Birds of Prey and other animals and other birds. And uh, this bird was a red-shouldered hawk that I found, and present right in this moment, I actually found the bird, and and it had just, just passed. So there's a moment where an animal is still warm, is still moving, but has definitely left its its physical body. And um, it's a pretty enlightening experience to be present during that time in an animal's path or experience. And that was this moment right here. And I was fortunate enough to, to be there and to photograph it. Um, nice. The wall is pretty much a collection of work from the past, well, I'd say it's actually pretty much a culmination of a lot of my work, examples of a lot of my work from the time I started making art, which was when I was quite young. Um, but my most recent work is the 3D pieces, the moving leg here, and all of these 3D pieces right here, which I sort of call 3D collages that I do with my own drawings. So I'll draw and I'll paint and then I'll collage them together in a 3D way. Nice. And more of them are going to have moving parts like this one with the motor. So coming soon then? Coming or soon. Coming yes. soon. <laughs> I'd like to ask you where do you get some of your inspiration, but it looks like you have a lot of inspiration going on. Do you, Is there anything you can narrow down? With? Tell us some of your process. Sure. Um, I work in a really stream of consciousness type of way, so I try to practice non-judgment in my work, and I try not to censor myself or judge what I produce, and I try to just work instinctually and um, and just sort of go with the flow of go with what the flow. my consciousness is providing me. It's more of um, it's more of an outlet for me than anything. I definitely don't try to to assign meaning to my work right away. I think meaning develops over time. And in my particular process, this is a growing body of work, and the body of work is telling me a lot about myself over time. And I'm starting to learn more about who I am as a person in an integral way and in a spiritual way. Um, but I don't think I would understand or, or comprehend if I didn't produce art. Julia, could you tell us when you got that phone call from Kaleidoscope, how what was your reaction? Just knowing that an up they're giving opportunity to young upcoming artists like yourself. It's really exciting. I've shown with them a few times before, um, but I was really excited and stoked to be in an all-female show. I think there needs to be more support for women artists, and I'm really excited to be part of that. So. Julia, one last question before sure. we leave. I know you're busy. I know there's a lot of people who want to check out your art right now. For our viewers that are sitting at home, they're watching, they're upcoming artists like yourself. Do you have any advice that you like to give them? Um, I think practicing art making is really important to practice a regular dis a discipline of being creative um, in whatever outlet or whatever avenue that that takes you. Um, I think it's really important to practice it, whether you consider yourself an artist or not, whether you just have a, a visual interest in something, explore that. It's really, it's important, I think, for everybody in their life to stay connected to that part of their their spirit. So I just encourage you all to, to keep it real and keep making and producing wonderful things. So. <laughs> Julia, could you tell our viewers out there, they're sitting along, they're watching, they love the art that they see. Is there any contact information? How could they contact you? Um, well, I run an independent skateboard company called The Sloth Skateboard Company, Sloth Skateboards. Um, I have a blog, http colon forward slash forward slash the sloth skateboard company dot com, or sorry, dot tumblr, t u m b l r dot com, uh, or www.slothskateboards.com. Um, I'm also on Facebook. My name is Julia Davis in Santa 
Rosa, I believe, is my network. Feel free to add me. Um, or you can just reach me through my email, slothskateboards at gmail.com. There you have it. Julia, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. And there you have it. Stay connected. Keep it real. From Julia, one of the upcoming artists here at Gallery 530 as Kaleidoscope presents Heartbreakers 2. Keep watching. <laughs> What's up world, King James, and we are here at Gallery 530 as Kaleidoscope presents Heartbreakers 2. Today, tonight, I am standing here with Nell. She is an upcoming artist here in Sonoma County, and we are standing in front of some of her work. This is one of my older pieces, and this is carved out of styrofoam. So I've used um, a, so this is styrofoam. A, yes, it's actually the stuff that people insulate their houses with, formaldehyde, formaldehyde free styrofoam. Nice. And I've carved it with a very sharp knife, and then sanded it down and stuccoed it to perfection. You see. <laughs> so for our viewers that are watching at home, what what type of art would that be? Would you be a, a what do they call it a cur curvature? A sculptural painting, and uh, I, I call it three-dimensional sculptural painting, and and then I adorn it with um, acrylic paint and all sorts of things, and I choose my finish. Some of these pieces are uh, really glittery, and I've I like the glitter look definitely. Thank you. I've kind of eye. moved on to metallic. I've had some criticism for the glitter, but metallic. some people still like it. So. Yes, <laughs> glitter warfare definitely in full effect. What is the name of this specific piece behind us? This is the fiery cityscape, and I, I kind of was picturing a, a modern city, something that doesn't exist. Uh, to quote Beck, I would say, the, the musical artist Beck, I would quote his song that says, I feed you fruit that don't exist. And I have other pieces here that kind of have that same feeling where I'm, I'm just making up something from the plant world or from the futuristic world that I imagine. Now, for this specific piece, how long did it take you to create something like this? This piece, I probably worked on it for four or five hours. Four or five hours? It's really not that long, but the process takes time because I have to wait for things to dry and then I sand it down again until really? I like the finish on it. So there's a couple processes then yeah. with, with your work. But I've been actually, this is one of my original pieces. This is in styrofoam. If you look over here, this piece is in resin and I've, I've done a whole different... Um, a different method. This is a poured resin piece, so I've actually wow. I've actually uh, made this. something really a lot more durable. The styrofoam is great, and it's great for sound um, absorption, but it it doesn't um, last up if people go. <laughs> If people go beat it up, and that's happened a few times at, at high high um, traffic venues. So I've I've kind of moved into this really heavy duty stuff, and it's kind of it's construction material again, nice. same as this piece, but in a very much more durable fashion. Well, no, I know I'm inspired. Now, for some of our viewers out there that might want to go out and get a what are those blades called that you use? This is this a specific tool that you use to cut things oh, out? A serrated or, kitchen knife, very specific. A serrated <laughs> kitchen knife. But do be careful; it's not for everyone. Definitely, <laughs> kids. And wear, don't try this wear at a home. Mask. <laughs> All right. I, I encourage everyone to make art and to be inspired by whatever is in their mind and I'm actually an art teacher and um, so that's what I do to bring the income but nice. I, this is my passion and um, thank you for taking the time to interview me tonight. Absolutely. Do you have anything to say to your students out there that are watching uh, their superstar teacher? Jeez. It's all about color. You got to get it right. So enjoy. There, there you have it. Nell, thank you once again for coming on the show. Viewers, you heard it. It's all about color. And that's our show for this evening. I'd like to thank everybody who's watching at home right now. Thank you to Gallery 530, Kaleidoscope, and all the sponsors involved in tonight's event. Special thanks to all the hottest upcoming female artists that you can look out for in the near future.
Tonight's proceeds are going towards a great cause as well. It's worth our wait. Like I said, it's a great cause. If you like more information about that, please log on to the website located on the bottom of your screen. Right now I'm standing with resident DJ Jimmy. Jimmy's going to take us. Jimmy, could you take us into our credits? Could you play a song for us? There it is. And there you have it. We're running out of time, and I'm running out of breath. We'll see you next time. Same UTV place. Same.